All right, it's your boy Big Rich, and it's another mob story. Now, sometimes when I do mob stories, they don't have to be current. It could be some past stories that have been brought to my attention because there's things I didn't know. So salute to Judith Moore. Judith Moore, thank you for leaving that comment. And again, salute to everybody that's emailing me that's ready to do shows. I have emailed you guys back. Let me know when you're ready. There's people calling in from Canada, Italy, there's some chick in Australia, if I'm not mistaken, that wants me to look into some stuff, and I will. But uh, this uh, quick video that I'm doing is about the Nikki Barnes, Matthew Madonna, Harlem heroin connection, okay? Um, now, also, I hear a lot of you guys leaving comments about Matthew Madonna not being the leader of the Lucchese crime family. Listen, the way I'm reading these articles, past and present... Um, they're all saying that Maddie's the boss. Now, maybe he, uh, but I'm going to use uh, the word alleged because my boy Base 7718, salute to you, sir. Hope I'm saying it right, Base 7718. I'm not sure. It's right off the top of the dome, but you, you know who I'm talking to, bro. Um, he was like, hey, rich man, he's, he's not the boss, you know, you know, allegedly. So let's say the alleged boss of the Lucchese crime family. But I just want to just quickly tell you a quick story about the um, Matthew Madonna, Nikki Barnes, Harlem connection. Okay, Nikki, Bar Nikki Barnes in 1975 was a legend in Harlem, a cancer that law enforcement officials could not eradicate, as the New York Daily News reported. In the same article, it detailed Barnes. It, in the same article, it detailed Barnes and Madonna's relationship. Barnes got his drugs from the mob, especially from Maddie Madonna. He and his mafia heroin supplier had a system for exchanging cash for the drug imported from Asia. Barnes would meet Matthew Madonna, a smuggler he befriended in a Green Haven Correctional Facility in upstate New York in 1959 to get the location of a car parked in a municipal lot in Manhattan and the keys to the car. Heroin would be in the trunk. One night in February 1975, which was a very good year because that was the year I was born, a 20-kilogram load of heroin from Bangkok was in a car that Madonna had parked in a 24-hour lot in Manhattan. After eluding the cops, Barnes picked up the car and drove to one of his several apartments he kept where underlings cut and packaged the heroin for sale on the streets. Two days later, Barnes returned to the car, its trunk full of cash, to another lot, met Madonna on another street corner, and gave him, the, gave him back the keys. The feds nailed Madonna that year, but Barnes found another supplier and kept going for two more years, beating another case in the Bronx. A 2007 magazine article titled Lords of Dope Town an interview with Barnes and Frank Lucas, that's why I have Frank Lucas in the picture, both retired by then mentioned Madonna. Madonna was given heavy time following his arrest. On December 21, 1976, he was sentenced to 30 years in federal prison. And when he was released, he was elevated to a capo for his silence. So salute to Matthew Madonna for keeping his mouth shut for 30 years in jail. This is your boy, Big Rich. With another mob story, Judith Moore, thank you so much for bringing this to my attention. Salute, everybody. Have a great uh, Friday evening. We'll talk to you guys later, all right? Salute.